Hello everyone, good morning from the Simmental. Welcome back to my channel Gemographic. I'm here at the Jaun Pass, almost at the top, and I'm waiting for the sun to rise. It's going to happen within the next one to two minutes. Really excited for that. I hope there will be great colors. And well, after enjoying the sunrise here, I will go up to the Jaun Pass and then I want to see how the Gastlosen Mountain are going to be illuminated, hopefully with a beautiful red glow. Beautiful, just beautiful. And I also just got to see a glimpse of the Gastlosen Mountains, how they look now being illuminated by the red light. I think it's really time to go up to the Jan Pass now, but once more, take a look. There's a lot to see in the Simmental. In my last video about it, I showed you the Effig Fall and the Siebenbrunnen Waterfall in Lenk. But now, let's concentrate more on the things you can do around Baltiken and Oberwil in the Simmental. Let's start with the tourism office in Baltiken, the sponsor of this video. It's located just by the road and there are surely enough places to park your car. At the tourism office, you can get various prospects about the attractions that you can visit in this region. In particular, I can recommend you the brochure for the Simmental Home Trail, which shows you the location of the various masterpieces of the traditional Simmental houses. Then, regarding accommodation, I can recommend you the Hotel Simmental, which also is located in Voltigen. It was my second time I stayed there. The interior is traditional, very cozy, the food you can eat at the restaurant is delicious and the owners are very friendly. All in all, the hotel is very authentic. Baltigen itself is quite small. As you're roaming around, there will be a couple of interesting houses to see. A very underrated attraction of the Simmental is the Heinz Kunz Bicycle Museum, in short, Hekru Velo Museum. In there, you can see plenty of old bicycles that have been commonly used during the 18th and 20th century. There are a lot of army bicycles, a penny farthing, or also called high wheel, a wooden bicycle, or plenty of small ones for the kids. The museum is definitely fascinating, the collection is very rich, and the owner, Mrs. Kunz, is really passionate about her and her late husband's collection. If you want to come here, the museum is open on every month's first Saturday up from 1 p.m. Or else you can just contact the owner, she will likely be available for you to show the museum. For more details, please check the descriptions. The owner of the museum, she just told me that basically all bicycles in here, they still can be ridden, which is actually fantastic to hear. Now, I would like to talk a little bit about the wheels. I just mentioned before that back in the old days, the bicycles, they had wooden wheels. And then they were putting metallic ring around to make sure that the wheel stays protected. However, that was very, very shaky. And this wasn't so convenient. So soon after, the people, they introduced these tires which definitely make the ride a lot smoother. And well, that's basically still the standard today. Bicycles, they didn't change too much over these decades, which actually shows that the design has been pretty good from very early onwards. And then here we have a repair station. So you can see the bicycle is mounted to do the necessary repair works and then on this side 
can see here the wheel is missing, it was taken out and then the bicycle is ready for repair and for that they would use these tools. As next, let's proceed to Schwarzenmaut, that pretty village just above Boltigen. I briefly indicated earlier that there is a house trail in the Simmental. In fact, one of the major attractions of this valley are its traditional houses, which charm with their beautiful architecture. Although the village is not part of the Simmental home trail, there are many traditional houses up in Schwarzenmatt. In particular, one of them is especially unique. This here is the Brunnerhaus up in Schwarzenmatt. It's another traditional masterpiece of a Simmentaler house. Interestingly, it's not part of the official house trail here in the Simmental, but nevertheless, it's really worth to come up here to Schwarzenmatt, especially to take a look at this one. I do have to say the village up here is really fantastic. It's so quiet, full of traditional homes. This one here, then somewhere up there are also Simmental kettles. You can hear the bells. Really great mood. It's very, very calm. And it's also very raw, which is probably something you may mainly know from the postcards of Switzerland. Well, these were mostly taken in landscapes like this one here. And now let's head back up to the Jan Pass and take a look how the local cheese is being produced. I'm now here at the cheese factory on the Jaun Pass and next to me is Mike. He's a cheesemaker and he's going to show me a little bit how the cheese is being produced up here. Myself, I've never seen it in life from very close, but yeah, really excited. Wie lange machst du jetzt das da oben schon? Seit dem Juni. Genau, aber Käse tun ich seit sechs Jahren. Sechs Jahre. So he's working here since June 2021, but he has been producing cheese since six years. All right, sounds exciting. Let's go to the inside. It's a long process that starts with heating and stirring the milk until a thick mass starts to develop. The thick mass is then separated from the liquid phase, then shaping it into the typically round cheese form. Afterwards, the cheeses are put into a salt bath and further infused with salt before they are stored at cool temperatures to let them mature. The cheese is stored for two months up there and for at least five more at a different place. During this process, the cheese eventually develops its taste. The next attraction that I'm going to show you is something that is very suitable for families. It's a forest park with lots of smaller attractions for the kids. This place is really cool, so it's really for kids, apparently, but, <laughs> well, myself, sometimes I like to be again a kid. And, well, yeah, the forest is full of playgrounds like this, which is really cool if you come up here with your family and kids, I'm sure they're going to enjoy it very much.
Now I'm trying this short zip line. Now let's head down to Oberville in Simmental. There are a couple of more attractions to experience over there. On your way from Baltigen to Oberville, you may consider getting a glimpse of the Simmental House Trail. In total, this trail comprises 39 houses. Very interesting are the houses number 21 and 22. They are both masterpieces of wood carpenting and very nice are also the paintings. At Oberville itself, you should take a look at the Venno House, indicated by number 26 on the home trail map. Among all the houses I've seen so far, this one is my very favorite. Impressive is definitely its large size and once again, the paintings. Further uphill, when following this road, you will arrive at the suspension bridge called Hängebrücke Leitonweide. For the last bit, which is about one kilometer long, you will have to walk as cars are not allowed to pass. The suspension bridge is very thrilling, the canyon very deep, and I can promise you that most likely you'll be alone in here. This is the suspension bridge Light on Weide. It leads you to Weissenburgbad, which is a historic building. And from here it's just 17 minutes crossing a very deep canyon. I'm really curious how it's going to be. Looks very promising. Let's go! Wow, it's very beautiful. The canyon is very deep and narrow, but great view over there as well as to this side it's very enjoyable up here I'm all alone and I think this attraction is really not known by many people good so now let's proceed to the Weissen Walkbot I'm really excited to see it and after that I'm going to take you to the cave track Now down in the canyon, feels very cooling, it's very tall. This is quite a discovery. I'm all alone and I really had no idea how beautiful it's going to be down here. Maybe you can even come here for a swim. I guess the water is very cold, but wow, it's so serene. Let's check the water temperature. It's quite cold. I would say very comparable to the Verzaska Valley. But the serenity, the vibes down here. Wow. <laughs> I've been overusing this word, but I do have to say it's really breathtaking. These here are the remnants of the former Weissenburg Bad. It used to be a very, very beautiful hotel. It's so sad that they have demolished it. It looked very beautiful. I would say in its architecture it was comparable to the Hotel Giesbach. So take a look. This was the first version. Then unfortunately it burned down in 1898. Then they've built a new one. Unfortunately also that one has been demolished because I think business didn't go so well. And what I read is that 
World War One and Two have been very bad for the tourism. I think that has caused a huge financial crisis and most likely led to the abandonment of this hotel and then the demolition. Yeah. <sighs> well, if you have been following me on YouTube so far, then you would know that I really value traditions, old houses, old hotels. I really love classy stuff. And now you just have this part remaining. But nevertheless, the hike down to the canyon, wow, it was fantastic. And I hope maybe someday they will come up with something better. Maybe again a new hotel, who knows, or something smaller. Let's see what the future brings. There are also the prehistoric caves at Oberwiede that can be visited. A spot at which I can assure you're going to encounter very few people. It's best to arrive up here by bicycle in order to save some of your time. There are four caves to visit. One of them is very large and you can even go inside. Here we are at the first cave. <laughs> Looking forward to climb up. Looks really interesting. Interesting. Now I'm at the beginning of the cave and well important to know there is a shelter so just turn to the right and then the lights will turn on. <laughs> That's definitely adventurous and it's quite slippery so make sure you bring good shoes, hold yourself tight to the rope and otherwise enjoy, don't stay for too long, it's, uh, it's just fine if you stay for a short while but I think 10 minutes in each cave is totally fine. Now let's head to the next one. Then there are three smaller ones. The Schnurreloch, Zwergliloch and this one here where you can have a barbecue. Whatever order you prefer to visit all of these attractions, I'll leave it up to you. I suggest you to visit nearby attractions in order to travel efficient. For finishing your day or even visit to the Simmental, I highly recommend to go to this spot which is almost at the top of the Jaunpass. From there, if the weather permits, you will be able to watch a beautiful sunset. The sunset is almost over. You can see some very little remaining glow at the mountains. I had a fantastic day here in the Simmental, many things to see. And now sealing up this day with this nice sunset it was very nice. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, please give this video a like, leave a comment, share it to your friends. It would be really awesome. Also, if you're new to this channel, then you're most welcome to subscribe. I really appreciate that. So that's it from my side. We're going to see each other very soon.